Yeah, I'm Addie. I'm a peer mentor here at SDI. Uh, we're starting a new series uh, on our podcast, um, kind of going into topics that students might not necessarily know about naturally. Um, I just want to start off with maybe you guys could introduce yourselves and introduce your work. Sounds great. Jason, did you want to go first or you want me to start up? Uh, either is fine. I'll go first. All right. So yeah, my name is Jason Lewis. I serve as the institution's Title IX investigator here. Um, I actually just began last October, so I just made a year here. Um, and as the investigator, my role is to do just that, to investigate. Um, so I'm going to be a non-biased party, and I'm going to go in between both the complainant and respondent and gather as much information as possible, um, collect any evidence, um, and then I'll create what's called an investigative report, and that's what's then used in order to make a decision. Awesome. Maybe. All right. And I'm Neil Calicote. I'm the Director of Equity Issues and the Title IX Coordinator. Uh, together, Chaselyn and I make up the Office of Equity Issues. And the Office of Equity Issues in general is going to be uh, the group that, that implements and oversees uh, a couple important policies here on campus, including the Title IX uh, policy, the Student Sexual Misconduct Policy, and to some degree, the anti-harassment and discrimination policy. And as the Title IX coordinator, it's my job to handle the intake of reports, um, reports that come in about potential or alleged violations on any of these policies, uh, to ensure students understand their rights and options, receive help, um, and understand uh, what they're going to do moving forward if they'd like to file a formal complaint. Um, and then, uh, as Chaselyn already alluded to, she would handle the investigation of those complaints. So if you guys could speak a little bit to kind of what is Title IX, what is covered under Title IX, um, I think that would be helpful for students that maybe not aren't sure or familiar with the term. Yeah, sure. Chaselyn, if you don't mind, I'll, I'll jump in on this one. Uh, Title IX, the words Title IX actually refer to a federal law. Title IX first uh, passed in, oh, I should have got this one ready for the podcast, 1972 Education Amendment Acts um, that says that essentially no person can be discriminated against in their education based on their sex and gender. Um, now, since it was passed in 1972, it seems like every four to eight years when a, a new presidential administration arises, there have been uh, changes, additions, deletions and updates. Um, so the, the Title IX law has changed a lot over time, but now it's reached a point where it, it's really an umbrella term for uh, all sorts of sexual harassment. So that could include um, quid pro quo sexual harassment, hostile environment sexual harassment, uh, but then also sexual harassment, including things such as uh, sexual assault, uh, rape, stalking, and issues like that. Um, and the, uh, the campus here, we are federally required uh, in some ways to handle the Title IX policy in, in certain ways, uh, but the campus also has a student sexual misconduct policy and an anti-harassment discrimination policy that we uh, make sure that we follow to ensure that students are all being treated fairly. Great. Um, so if a student was unsure whether or not to reach out to your office or not, what would you say to them? You want me to get this one, Neil? Sounds good. Okay. Um, so first, I would recommend that they contact what's called a confidential resource. Um, these are going to be individuals on campus that are, are properly trained to do a bit of um, intake, if you will. They'll um, be able to like listen to like what the student is saying, and also they'll be able to tell them different on and on campus resources that are available to them. Um, and these individuals will not um, report to us. Um, but if students tell um, practically anyone else on campus, so like faculty members, a variety of staff members, if they go to them, those individuals are called what's, what's called responsible employees. So those students, let's just say, for example, they tell their uh, English professor what happened. Those individuals are required to then come tell us. But first and foremost, if they aren't sure, go to those confidential resources. Yeah. 
And I think I would add to that if there's a student out there that's a little anxious and they're not sure if they should talk to us or not, I'd let them know that you get to maintain your decision making and autonomy through the process. Um, we are not going to take that away from you. If you report to our office, you know, I'm going to send you an email with an overview of your rights and options and invite you in to talk, but you still have the right to completely ignore our emails. You can come in, hear what we have to say, and decide that you don't want any sort of action taken by the school um, or anything like that. So um, I, I would tell students that you're still in control of this process. Could you speak a little bit more to the process of if a student reaches out, um, how that might begin and, and move forward from there? Yeah, absolutely. So anytime our office receives a report, whether that's a student reporting it directly to our office, um, they've reported it to a, a faculty member or someone here who's required to send it to us, uh, anonymous, whatever it is. Um, maybe not so much for anonymous because we can't really contact that person. But when we receive a report, uh, first thing we're going to do within 24 hours, we're going to send an email out to that student. It's an invitation to come to speak with our office, and then also just a, a two-page PDF, uh, kind of the overview of our policies here. What are those rights and options that a student has? Um, should they take us up on that offer? I'm going to sit down with the student and talk with them about supportive measures. What are the things we can do here to help a student continue their education? So whether they had an incident that was with someone here on campus or it was back home three states away with someone unrelated, uh, we can talk about what options we might have here to help support them. Maybe you've got a big test coming up on Friday and you, you haven't been able to study because you've been through a traumatic experience. Our office can help reach out to your professors and negotiate academic accommodations, such as pushing back um, deadlines. You know, If you're having a, a a, an issue under the sexual misconduct policy with a roommate, we can work with housing and residents to try to determine what changes are available there. There's a lot of things we can do and it's it's individualized for everyone. So it's not like we have a menu you choose off, but we can have a conversation about what's gonna help you continue your education. After that, if the concern is about someone else here at Columbia, student, faculty, staff, some, someone in our community, we're gonna have a discussion about the formal complaint process and if that person wants to move forward with a formal complaint. Um, some students do want to move forward and some don't. And uh, uh, we are there to, to help give someone the information they need to make that decision. I briefly wanted to jump in to invite you to fill out our listener survey. Our first year was made by and for students to address topics that students see as potential barriers, concerns, or intentional joyous moments to get from our first year to graduation. Go to bit.ly slash OFY feedback. That's B-I-T dot L-Y slash O-F-Y F-E-E-D B-A-C-K to fill out the survey. As a thank you, you will be entered into a raffle every semester. Thank you, and now back to the episode. Um, so outside of, you know, having a case to report, um, are there ways that students can interact with your work? Yeah, so our office actually uh, leads the student organization, SAAEC, which stands for the Sexual Assault Education um, Committee. And so that organization, uh, we typically host different events in the Columbia community just to spread overall awareness of like how to report, you know, what falls underneath Title IX um, and who exactly do you contact when you have uh, different questions. Um, we actually host meetings um, monthly starting January. So we, this past semester, we hosted meetings bi-weekly. And so starting in January, I think on the second week, we'll begin those meetings again. They're actually going to be hosted in our suite um, at 623 South Wabish, uh, Suite 303. Great. Um, did you have anything to add? Uh, no, I think that's a great answer. Awesome. Um, what would you say to new students coming in to look to advocate for themselves? Do you have any advice for them? 
I am a big fan of self advocators. You know, if you need help, you should be out there trying to find that help. You know, if it's something related to a Title IX or a, a harassment or discrimination based issue, uh, come on in and we're going to do what we can. But if it's something to do with a, a disability, you're going to want to speak with that office. Uh, you know, if this is uh, some assistance you might need from our counseling services team, get in there and speak to them. There are a lot of great resources here on campus for students. And uh, I, I'm a big proponent uh, of people getting out there, advocating, uh, and getting the help they need to succeed. Awesome. You kind of mentioned this earlier. Um, so if a student is wondering, you know, what is considered a case that they can give to you guys, can come to you guys for, um, kind of, with, could you speak to kind of what the lines are with that? Um, does could they come in if they were, you know, affected by an employee or a non-student or like a family member or someone who's not on campus? Yeah, so I would say that I, I don't expect anyone to be an expert in Title IX. Um, Title IX is um, kind of a, a nebulous and, and difficult thing to understand. There are so many regulations and we are we're awaiting some 800 to 1000 page update from the Biden administration sometime in the next year. I don't need a student to be an expert. If you have something that you might even consider it, come on in and talk to one of us. Send us an email. Uh, email us at title 9 columedu I'd be happy to to meet via in person, telephone, Zoom, email, what, whatever you're comfortable with. And we can have a talk about if this may or may not fall under the policy. Um, and if it doesn't, where might it go? Because there are times that you know, maybe there's some behavior that's reported and it's it's certainly inappropriate, but it might not be sexual harassment, in which case we can refer that to a, a student code of conduct process through the dean of students or um, really just find some help for someone. Do you guys have any resources that you would recommend for people wanting to learn more about Title IX and their rights and protections? Yeah, so on our website, we have um, our policies listed there if they wanted to take time out to read that or um, they can consider joining SAEC. Um, that organization, like I said earlier, we um, kind of put the the policy and like information like in a way that it's easy for like everyone to understand. Um, and so that way, as well as just stopping by our office if you ever have like any questions at all or shooting us an email, as Mill said earlier. Awesome. These are all the questions that I had for you guys, but if there's anything that you guys wanted to specifically, you know, speak to that you think students might be unclear about, I would love to hear that. Yeah, if I could reiterate anything, it's that if you have questions or need help, please reach out. On college campuses, the, the Title IX or the Office of Equity Group, um, you know, we, we cover a dry and uncomfortable subject matter, um, or sometimes people see us as uh, you know, we're the the police somehow, and we're out to investigate and 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 get people. But that that's not really what it is. The heart of what we do is trying to provide support to students who have been through tra traumatic experiences. Um, so, you know, I'd recommend to anyone out there uh, that has any interest at all in learning about more of their rights and options to go ahead and contact us. Awesome. And if I can plug something in earlier, I mentioned uh, just the role of confidential resources, but I did not identify exactly who those entities were. So uh, one is the counseling services, um, student relations, as well as the student health center and um, the director of student diversity and inclusion, Sheree Mosby Holloway. Um, if you go to any of these people, um, if you tell them anything that whatever you say to them will stay specifically with them. Awesome. Thank you both so much for this. Um, this is our second episode of our What is a series for our peer support program podcast um, at SDI. Uh, thank you so much once again. <laughs> thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you.